Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. The law to which Christ refers is broadly understood to be the redemptive history and the promises of God in the Old Testament, the Torah. It is also understood a little more narrowly as the law of God summarized in the Ten Commandments, hence the Old Testament reading for today. Here, Jesus says that the law will not pass away until heaven and earth pass away. It's interesting that Jesus should connect the purpose and the permanence of the law with the transient nature of the heavens and the earth which we now inhabit. But it also makes sense. Once the heavens and the earth pass away, all of God's people will rise in the resurrection, receive glorified bodies, and dwell in the presence of the Lamb forever. In eternity, all of the promises of God will be fully realized, and the Word of God will have accomplished the entire purpose for which it was sent. Equally important, though, is the fact that the heavens and the earth are not going to last. That is a truth that all Christians recognize. The creation has been affected with sin since the time of the fall. It is destined to be destroyed because it is no longer good. We know this plainly from teachings like the one we have today. But the passing away of the old heaven and earth in exchange for the new heaven and earth should not be underestimated. Jesus wants us to connect the importance of God's word with the transient nature of heaven and earth. But does the heaven and the earth always feel like it is passing away? Maybe the quick answer is yes, because we know that it is, since Scripture tells us it is. But it's fascinating to see how the old Adam in us doesn't really like to acknowledge that all things are passing away. I'll give you an example. I bet a great many of you here today like routine. It's a great thing when you know what each day is going to bring. Maybe you've got it all written out on your calendar, or perhaps it's nicely compartmentalized in your mind. Chances are, some of you may like routine so much, you don't even need a calendar. You may not even need to think about it at all, because you know exactly what's coming. Routine can be great. It can help you manage your lives, maybe help you save some time. But it comes with some temptations, too. Routine can make life feel certain and predictable. And predictability makes us feel like we are the ones who are really in control. And we can begin to think that what happened in last week's routine is definitely going to be the same as what's going to happen in this week's routine. Slowly but surely we give way to the feeling that tomorrow will be the same as today. Pretty soon all this stuff about Heaven and earth passing away recedes into the back of our mind because our old Adam wants us to believe that everything is going to be the same forever. Life will just go on as it always has. We know what we need to do today and tomorrow and the next day. And as long as we do those things, well, everything's going to turn out just fine. In fact, if we do all these things the way we should, maybe everything will be great. If we work hard at our job, company might do well. Maybe we'll get promoted. Perhaps we raise that model family, at least in the eyes of our neighbor. Maybe we rarely miss those social events, and we are well-liked. Sometimes it looks like we are pretty much on top of everything. And the law, which Jesus is talking about, well, it doesn't feel like it accuses us too often when things are going well. And so the old Adam wants to keep on enjoying the routine of life and telling us there is nothing to be concerned with. Certainly not being concerned with the end of all things. But there's something terribly wrong with this. It's not necessarily the routine or the work or the family in itself. In fact, the fact is we think uh, we are in control. We think that, again, we know what tomorrow will bring. 
And the sting and the law doesn't seem so severe when life is predictable and the end seems so far away. That's the real problem. Well, that's precisely why Jesus says, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. The old Adam deceives us even in something as simple as routine and predictability. That's why Jesus must say, heaven and earth are passing away, and the law will remain in force, the full force, until everything is accomplished. It's easy sometimes to forget that heaven and earth are approaching their end. And sometimes the Lord reminds us of it. He reminds us when our routine doesn't work out, or when life isn't predictable, and its fallenness and sinfulness shows its ugly self. Suddenly, in those times, the words of Jesus become clear. All along, the law has been crying out that the world is sinful, and so are we. But with equal power, it declares not only that we are sinful, but also that we need a Savior. We need a Savior to save us from the sinfulness of the world and the fallenness of our flesh. It's with that reality in mind that Christ says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. What a wonder it is about Christ and his fulfilling of the law and the prophets. Here is our Lord, come in the flesh. He doesn't have routine quite like we do. He doesn't rely on predictability. He's mobbed by crowds who don't even let him rest. He travels to and fro constantly proclaiming the good news. He's despised and hated. Yet amidst all of these things, he never transgresses God's law. He fulfills it instead. He is holy, pure, and undefiled. The entire course of his life is lived in service to God by serving the neighbor. And in the end, though the whole world betrayed him, he would only utter words of mercy in their defense, pleading with the Father for the forgiveness of sins on his account. Christ has fulfilled the law. He has succeeded where we have failed. He was tempted in all manner of ways, yet prevailed. But he has not prevailed for his own sake. He had nothing to prove of his own accord. For the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily in him. So the truth is, he came for us to live as we should have by keeping the commands of God day and night. Still, the keeping of the law for us was not his only reason for coming in the flesh. It is true that he needed to have a righteousness lived out in the flesh with which to make us appear actively righteous in him. But he has also come to fulfill the prophets, to fulfill not only the keeping of the law, but the removing of transgression. He took upon himself in the flesh the sins of the whole world, and he bore those sins. Because of them, he was smitten by the sting of the law, which is death, so that in his death he might swallow up death and earn forgiveness and eternal life for us who have lost it. That reality of what Christ has done. This truth is what the Word of God declares. That we are but sinners who have no hope in our own works or in our own ways. We only have hope in Christ. Jesus has come to save us from our sin and from this world which is passing away. This salvation is what He has accomplished in His flesh when he has kept the law perfectly and paid the price as though he transgressed it with his death, in his death. How liberating is that truth in Christ. We are set free from vainly hoping to control our lives and from uselessly offering up our routine works as though they are really pleasing to God all the time. We need not worry about tomorrow or the next day or the day after that not because of our routines or the work of our hands, but because Christ has triumphed over the ultimate end of all these things, which is a perishing world. And at our last, 
in the death of our bodies and the loss of this heaven and earth, Jesus says he will give us everything new. In him we have received the promise of the forgiveness of sins, the renewal of our bodies in a glorified form in the resurrection, and a new heaven and a new earth to be inhabited with God forever. No wonder Jesus says that he has not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And it's a good thing he has, because it means our very salvation this day and every day, until all is accomplished and Christ returns in glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.